to Freedom Train Radio. I'm your host, I'm your one of your co-hosts, Joseph Ward, and I'm with my good friend, the remarkable Mr. Patrick Irvin. Go ahead and say something to the people, Mr. Irvin. Something to the people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy to have y'all back here. Happy to be on board the Freedom Train. How about you, Mr. Patrick? Oh, I'm excited. I'm super excited, especially uh, with the way the last show went and with the hosts we have today. We went yeah. from, or uh, with the guests we have today, I'm sorry, we went from working on your mind, uh, Brother Keith Turner giving you that poetry last week. Now we're going to work on your body. We got a guest here today that's going to help you turn your body into poetry in motion. Yes, we will. <laughs> So, on today's show, we have Miss Rashida A. Marshall. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> uh, Miss Rashida Marshall hails from the beautiful West Palm Beach, Florida, currently resides in Tallahassee, Florida, and is a graduate of Florida State University with a bachelor's degree of science in exercise science. She decided to follow her passion of promoting health, fitness, and wellness, which led to the creation of skillfully sculpted health and fitness, where she offers fitness training and health education to help women to become their best selves. As a fitness coach, health educator, and figure competitor, and for those of y'all that didn't see the picture, she, you know, we had the picture up. She's legitimate. <laughs> And she has won a trophy, so she is a champion. <laughs> Ms. Marshall strives to empower women to take charge of their health by encouraging them to develop a newfound per perception, I'm sorry, of health and fitness. It don't get much better than that, y'all. We got a certified, award-winning fitness competitor on the show talking to you guys about how to get your body right. Y'all better, well, y'all ain't ready. I don't think they're ready, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, you better be ready. You better strap on your seatbelt because I'm telling you, we're taking you to something, to somewhere where you really didn't think you were going on this here freedom train. Freedom <laughs> train. And so you see that? We ain't even just freeing their minds no more. Now we, we, we unlocking their bodies too. Yeah, see, I mean, I mean, the, the, the train is holistic. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. The train is holistic. <laughs> How are you doing today, Ms. Marshall? I'm doing great. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for inviting me on the Freedom Train today as your uh, featured guest. I really appreciate it. But I'm doing well. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. No, no problem. No problem. Thank you for coming aboard Freedom Train. Now, um, we want to jump into a couple questions, you know, get to know you a little better so our audience can learn more about you. So um, first okay. question is, why is exercise and health the path you chose to pursue? Well, uh, health and wellness and fitness overall has something that's always been the most interesting to me. Uh, whenever I would see a health article in a magazine or if there was something health-related on the television. That's always what I was drawn to from a young age. And um, I was also very interested in learning how my body works and, you know, how certain foods can help certain health conditions and improve the way you feel and the way you look and, you know, what exercises that you can perform to reach the goals that you're looking for. So this has always been very intriguing to me, not only to learn it, but to pass that information on to others, um, you know, just to tell people, you know, why they should drink more water and what exercises will work for what they're, you know, what they're going for. So I just always had a love for it, and I just felt like because it's always been a part of who I was, it would be the best thing for me to pursue in life because it, you know, it all would be a life learning uh, adventure for me because I love it so much, so. <laughs> oh, loves it. You hear that? You got to love it, people. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go right on into, when did you realize, I know you got to think back for this one, <laughs> when did you realize 
that helping to improve the health of black women was a passion of yours? I would say that it wasn't so much something that I, I realized at one particular moment. It was more so something that I always kind of knew, but it was strengthened at a certain point. I, I would say it that way. Um, I think one of the big reasons why I was always interested in it from a younger age was because of um, my mother. She She's always been a, a very healthy person. She exercises regularly even from when she was in high school up to now. She's still running marathons and things like that, and she, she promoted healthy eating, so she would always teach that to me. So I, I was kind of looking up to, you know, to her and seeing how she took care of herself and, and wanting to do the same thing for myself. And our house was filled with a lot of um, magazines such as you know, Essence and Jet Magazine. So whenever I would flip through those, uh, I would always love to read whatever health article was, was in it, uh, in the magazine. And, you know, those magazines cater to African-American women. So over time, I was learning what was unique to us and what health conditions, you know, we were most affected by and how we needed to care for our bodies and so on and so forth. So I just grew to love knowing how to take care of myself. I and mean, seeing my mother, a black woman, take care of herself just reinforced it in me. And then when I got to college and I began uh, volunteering with certain organizations and jobs that I had, that most often was the population I was working with. And um, I just really enjoyed helping other women, knowing, you know, knowing how beneficial it it was to me, so I, I wanted to help other African American women have that same information that I had. I wanted them to to have it as well, so that they could improve their lives. Especially knowing how, you know, obesity and a lot of um, chronic illnesses and stuff normally affects African American women more. I just wanted them to know how they could could care for their health. So I, I would definitely say it was strengthened once I just got out into the community more and started working with more people over time is when I knew this was the population I really want to stick to with whatever I do. So. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. I mean, that's great because you got the, the hands-on experience of mm -hmm. working with uh, black women rather than, you know, doing it theoretically or something like that. So. Yes, definitely. I think that, that helps you to learn people's different personalities and to actually hear you know, face-to-face -face what they're going through and what their struggles are, you know, you get a, a better perspective as to where people are coming from and how their help is going to be different from someone else's, and you can really get more personal and, and help them, just especially um, the way they need to be helped. So very useful. Okay. Appreciate that. So um, no, another question. Um, uh -huh. is, it, is it safe to say that your mother was your biggest influence as far as you you going into the, the field of health and wellness? Yes. Well, both of my parents. Uh, my, my mother more so just because, again, she's always been a healthy person, and I've, I've been raised that way, and she always promoted it and stuff. So that was a big reason why I chose, you know, I wanted to remain in that field. But also outside of that, just both of my parents were always very big in encouraging me to, continuously learn and to, you know, not waste time and to do what I, you know, what I enjoy doing and stuff like that. But when I told them that this was, you know, the path that I wanted to go down, they were very supportive. And, and the fact that they always encouraged me to learn made me want to gain more knowledge related to this field. So I, I wanted to attain more certifications and read books that were in this area because I wanted to be as knowledgeable and as skilled as I could within, within this area. So um, my mother, because of what I saw growing up, but then both of my parents because of the, the values and the ideas that they instilled in me. So it really helps when you decide to take that leap towards doing what you want to love when you have that support behind you, back in you. Now, you talk about services, and I, I did a quick Google search uh, earlier today, because I wanted to not sound like a bumbling idiot, <laughs> um, and I saw, well, there's a lot of information available on you by Google search, but also you seem to be, uh, I, I saw kickboxing, yoga, Zumba, like what, what are all of the services that you provide? 
Yes. Well, um, I just as you mentioned, I do do. <clears throat> I do do uh, group fitness classes, so all of those are uh, different areas that I'm certified in, uh, as well as yoga, fitness. So I've been uh, doing yoga, which has been like my newest love in, in the health and wellness field. I, I'm really enjoying yoga and uh, teaching that to others, as well as personal training, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or small group training, and uh, fitness plans for those who may not have the time to meet for training sessions or live outside of Tallahassee who would like to have something to follow, I do put together fitness plans as well as um, wellness coaching packages. Um, I, I, I've decided to make the packages a little more holistic, so I'd like to include fitness as well as nutritional guidance along with the coaching services so that whomever is looking to improve their health and wellness, they, they have a good idea as to all the areas that they should be focusing on. So not just managing stress or not just putting exercise into their schedule, but making sure they have the, the whole holistic um, uh, needs for what, they're, you know, for what would help them to improve their health and wellness. So wellness coaching packages. And uh, all of those can be done in person or virtual, again, for anyone who may not be uh, close enough to meet with me in person. So. Okay. Thank you for that. Because uh, we want to make sure people know what you can provide and what services that you do have out there for, you know, your target population of black women to help improve their health and wealth. Um, Thank so you. my question is, why did you name your brand Skillfully Scoped? What, what prompted you to say, you know what, Skillfully Scoped it is what I want to go with? Yes. Well, when I was thinking of names, uh, I, I wanted to choose something that had a meaning behind it. You know, I knew, I knew it would be focused on fitness and exercise and stuff, and I didn't want to keep it there. I wanted it to have a meaning that, that went behind the title. So uh, the thing that came to mind is I knew whatever I was going to do, I wanted to make sure that when I was with clients, or if I was writing a blog or anything like that, that the focus of what I was teaching would deal with, um, you know, learning about health and wellness and knowing about your body and what you need and understanding the proper way to exercise, the proper and improper way to eat and, you know, how much sleep should you get, all of those type of things. I wanted women to really be learning and not just going off of what someone is telling them or what they read in a magazine, but truly having a, a good grasp and understanding for themselves. Um, especially because there are so many quick fixes and, and, you know, gimmicks out there, it's really important to know what's safe and correct for you to do. So, it, you know, once you learn yourself, you know, you learn for yourself and you're able to practice different things and experiment with what you're learning and see what works and, you know, just little things like walking through a gym if you're, if you're intimidated, you know, before going in and exercise, go through and walk and, and learn how all the machines work and then the next time you'll go, you'll be, you know, much more confident to, to choose the machines that you know you need to be using. Um, it not only helps you to learn, but you'll, you know, overall you'll have that greater understanding of yourself in your body. So when, when you do that and you take the time to, to gain knowledge for yourself, you're going to be in a better position to, to reshape and to sculpt your body the way that you want because now you're doing it the correct way. So, you know, you're getting it done skillfully. You're doing it the right way, the way it needs to be done. So you're not only shaping your body, but you're also shaping your mind. So I, I wanted the name to focus on how all of those things are what should be reshaped when you're on that health and wellness journey, the way you view your health, the way you view your life and your body, but just do it the right way and, and make sure you have a full understanding for yourself because in the end, it's, it's you who you're working on. So uh, that, that's what I wanted to go for with, with what the title um, said. Okay. And now, um, and, and as always, we, we always – running up on time. It's only 30 minutes. But with that, I want to ask you um, to give some tips. Mm -hmm. I know you've already given quite a few uh, jewels <laughs> in what you've said thus far, but give, give some specific health tips um, to black women that might be listening now or that might listen to the show on replay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, similar, similar to some of the things I had mentioned before, I think one of the biggest things is 
to know your body and to, you know, know what feels right for you, what, what you feel to be, you know, a, a healthy weight as long as you are, you know, taking care of your body inside and out and not going off of things that you're seeing, or things that you're hearing. So know your body, know what feels right, know what things are off and, um, you know, what, what you need to be comfortable. I would say to, you know, treat your body the same way you would treat your favorite car, your favorite pair of shoes, you know, the same things that you're putting into your body, you need to treat yourself with love and with care and and um, paying attention to to what you're taking in because, you know, what you see, what you take in on, on the inside is going to affect how you look on the outside and, of course, how you feel and everything. Uh, choosing quality foods, you know, again, a lot of times people will try and cut certain foods out of their diet or whatever, and, and you need to have that balance within what you're eating. So choose quality over quantity, you know, choose quality things. Um, and especially knowing the signs. I know black women in particular, we deal more with obesity and hypertension, diabetes, and, and heart disease. So I think because those things are, are more common amongst black women right now, it's, it's really important to know what are the signs of all of those different uh, complications or illnesses so that you can uh, notice it right away if, if that's something that you're dealing with and get it taken care of and take whatever preventative measures you need to take so that it doesn't work within your body. Uh, you know, one example could be something like a heart attack. Um, a lot of times people will think that a heart attack is that very sharp, you know, pain and you're gasping for air and your hands on your chest and, you know, moving very dramatically. But a lot of times it could just be symptoms that come and go or, or very mild pain or maybe, you know, you're sore in your jaw or your shoulder on a certain side of your body. You may never think that you're suffering a heart attack, but those very well could be signs of you having one. So any, anything small like that, knowing what you may be most at risk for, understanding what could come about if you're dealing with it and just paying attention to how you feel at, at all times so that you can um, always be on top of your health. So I think those are some really big things that I would uh, promote. And as well as being patient with yourself. If you're new to exercise or if it's very difficult at this point in your life, be patient, do what you can. And, you know, over time with consistency, you, you'll see results. So don't look for a quick fix, but be, be patient with the transformation. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Those were some helpful tips and some some real tips. You know, we we'll appreciate the um, you know the realness in your answers rather than you know the typical exercise tips that people can give. They're giving people real practical tips that they can use. Um, thank you. So my my question for you now is, how does a person's diet affect their health? Yes. Oh, man, that's a big one. <laughs> uh, it, it's a huge part of our health. You know, some, a lot of people have heard the 80-20 rule. You know, health is 80% diet, 20% exercise. Um, what you eat is is a huge part, again, as, uh, of how you're going to feel and how you're going to carry on in your day-to-day -day life because the, the vitamins and nutrients and everything that we need from our diet play, play a role such a large role, excuse me, in how your body functions, you know, every single day. So a huge problem is when uh, moderation isn't a part of a person's, you know, habits, moderating how, how much unhealthy they're getting versus healthy and if they're eating too much of this versus too much of that, and that can uh, put the body out of balance. And um, sometimes people will restrict or over, overcompensate for certain things based on the goals that they want to reach. They may think that that's the right way to get it, and, again, that can uh, throw things off. So I always like to tell people, you know, you need – your carbs, protein, and your healthy fats, all of them play a different role in your body. You don't want to take one out of the other. You know, carbs are your main source of energy. They allow for uh, the body to break down fat and for you to store energy. But if you don't have enough carbs, you know, you're going to be um, mentally and, and uh, fatigued uh, physically as well. But then if you have too much, you're going to store it on your body. So you can see how that can um, be, be negative based on, on what, which way, which way you're falling. Uh, with protein, you know, you need it to build your muscles and, and it helps with a lot of other structural processes in the body. But too little, you know, you're going to break down your muscle. Too much is going to be a strain on your kidneys and, and cause other issues and as well as storing the body. And then we all know what fat 
too much of it is going to store and too little is going to mess with like your body temperature and you know the the ability for you to remain full for longer periods of time so i think when you have a good grasp as to how everything works within your body Again, it helps you to, to structure what it is you're going to eat um, and what do you need versus what you're, you know, what you're getting too much of and all of that. And that all plays into you losing or gaining weight or building muscle and um, helping the way your hair and, and nails look. All of those things are tied into what you're putting into your body. Wow. <laughs> uh, that was not intentional. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, that was you. No, not me. No, I'm just saying to her. <laughs> I, was, I was like, man, I know she's going off, but damn. <laughs> oh, so... Uh, but actually, we did get a question come in through Facebook. Um, okay. So and that is actually it actually ties directly into one of the questions we were going to ask anyway. So um, by merging these questions together, and mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll get a handle on these things. But basically, <laughs> um, the question specifically was. Why did you choose to become a figure competitor? Which is actually exactly like one of the the exact question that we were going to ask you anyway. Oh, cool. But we're going to mix it in um, with another question that's been flowing through our minds, which is uh, not only why did you become, not only do we want to hear why you chose to become a figure com uh, competitor, but also what challenges have you faced or have you seen that other black women face as figure competitors? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, well, well, I'll start with the first one. Uh, the reason that I, I chose to do figure competitions was because I came across some pictures a couple years ago. I don't remember where I saw them, but I, I saw pictures of figure competitors, and I was very, very intrigued by it. You know, I... Um, I saw the ladies up there, and they were so fit and healthy, and I was like, you know, what, what, is, what is this? You know, and I, that's where it started my research, and then I came across bikini competitions and fitness and, you know, the whole world of bodybuilding. I just got immersed in, in the research and, and looking at it, and then I, I printed all the pictures, and I printed, you know, all these um, how, you know, how to train and how to eat for a figure competition. I printed all of them, and I... I kind of just sat them away, you know, like I put them in a folder and I, I didn't look at them for a while. And then I came back across them maybe some months later and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I just kind of, I just said it, you know, I didn't think about it too long. I just said I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't know what I have to do yet, but I'm going to look it up and I'm going to do this. And um, I think the thing that I, I loved most about it once I started to learn, okay, this is what I need to do starting at this point, and so on and so forth, was that it seemed like a fun challenge. It was something I wanted to take on because it's a complete transformation that you go to, even if you are someone who's already been fit, you know, it was, which is my case. I was, I was always someone who loved exercise, so I wasn't making a uh, – it wasn't a huge shift in my life, but either way, it's a huge transformation that you are able to see based on what exercises you have to perform and uh, – what foods you want to eat, or you have to eat, excuse me. And um, I think that's the, that's the best part of it is taking your picture, you know, 16 weeks out or 12 weeks out and then doing what you need to do every single day, eating what you need to eat, waking up super early, and then 16 or 12 weeks later you look at what you've just created for your body. And to me that was that was something I wanted to take on. Like I wanted to create that for myself because I knew in the end the, the, the person who was going to be responsible for that transformation was myself, and I, I just wanted to, I wanted to commit myself to that challenge. So um, that's why I love it. I, I love that part of it, you know, kind of it's me against me. Like I just have to be better than before, and I have to look up earlier this time, but I know in the end, you know, I'll, I'll be able to be so proud of myself for what I was able to accomplish. So that's, that's the biggest thing for me. That's why I love it, along with, 
you know, the exercise and, and health part of it as well, but the transformation is really what drew me to it. Um, as well as being on stage. That's always fun when you're on stage. <laughs> People are up there looking at you and stuff. That's fun too. <laughs> um, and I would say the, the biggest challenge, uh, and this, this is coming more so from my experience. I know when I won my uh, first figure overall, which was um, May of last year, when I won that, and some of the judges, you know, after we were off stage and stuff, and some of the judges came back to to tell me, you know, little things I could work on and what they wanted to commend me on and things like that. And one of the female judges told me that I was going to have, if I wanted to succeed in this area and if I wanted to really get to a national level and get sponsorships and things like that, that I was going to have to change my hair. She told me, because I, I currently have locks, and at that point I had just started my locks, but I had had natural hair for several years prior. So I had no intentions of changing my hair to compete in the figure competitions. Despite what I had seen in pictures, I knew that's not how my hair was, and I didn't want to compromise that part of me. But one of the judges did tell me I was going to have to change my hair and maybe consider wearing a lace front or something like that so that I could fit the image or the look that they wanted. Uh, you know, I tried, to, I tried to explain to her, you know, what I was doing with my hair. Um, and tried, you know, I tried to let them know, well, in a year, you know, they're going to be a little bit longer. They're going to be fully locked, you know. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't really, you know, grasp how I was going or either she, just didn't, she didn't care. But um, so just from, from that perspective and knowing that she thought it would be best if I changed my hairstyle and then looking at, at other uh, uh, black women who compete, and not all of them do that. I, I certainly wouldn't say that. I've seen a lot of, of women, especially now that more black women are entering into figure competitions, which I love. Um, you know, I've seen more women who are rocking their locks and their, you know, their afros or their shortcuts or whatever the case is, or braids, you know, any, any of those styles. Um, but I do see a lot on the other end who, who do put in the – the, you know, sew-ins or whatever the case is so that they can fit that image. Um, and it's not, it's not to say that that's, that's horrible. However, I would say that's the, the biggest challenge. You know, if you're someone who embraces your natural hair and, you know, what's on your head, I don't feel that we should have to change that, you know, in order to fit a certain look. I understand they want us to look presentable and graceful and, and well put together, but you can certainly do that with a head full of locks or your natural curly hair out as long as you are presenting a well put together package fitness-wise and how graceful you are and how well you present your physique. I don't think that there should be one type of, of hairstyle that, that they believe fits an image, especially when you have a wide array of women who are up there. We're not all going to look the same in that aspect. So um, that's, that's one thing that I would, I would say based on my experience with competing thus far. Wow. Hmm. That's, a, that's, that's cool. That's cool because now, now we know why you do what you do because figure, uh, you know, being a figure competitor as a black woman, I can say it's something that's not seen a lot or that may not be popular. So mm -hmm. um, to have one that being a, a, a successful figure competitor and being able to stand up to the challenges and, you know, not change yourself or have to have to feel like you need to assimilate to be successful. So that's, that's, yeah. that's great. And that's, you know, we we appreciate that because young girls and black women need that and that's inspiration for others. So we'll applaud you for that. So. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hey. With yeah. that, what's up, Joe? Nah, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, we've hit our 30-minute our, our marker. We've actually gone over a little bit. Uh, for those of you that are listening on the Internet, and I assume there are a few of you because I'm getting questions in my Facebook feed, <laughs> go ahead and call that number that's attached to the Freedom Train picture and we're going to open the floor up for you guys to ask all your questions as soon as we go off the air in a more intimate and private setting. So, okay. with that being said, we're going to close out. We're going to let the amazing Joseph Ward, activist, author, in your face all the time, 
positive, but don't push him too far because he can get not so positive. More. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, remember, 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 remember to catch. Miss uh, Rashida, what is your website? It is uh, www.skillfullysculpted, spelled just how it sounds, skillfullysculpted.com. Okay. And remember, y'all log on to skillfullysculpted.com and check out Ms. Rashida Marshall and all the health information that she has. And join us next week right here, 730 once again on the Freedom Train. And we appreciate you all being here. And we love you all, and we'll see you next week. Peace out. Mm -hmm.